Talk tech now. Uh, AI, um, from what I've read and heard, is r really like a sort of a new revolution within the digital revolution, right? Along with mobile computing, cloud computing, the web itself. Yeah. Uh, and every time there were these major transformations, we've heard these predictions of gloom and doom. And so we're hearing yeah. them again. Yeah. W where do you fall in that spectrum? Is this one more sort of advance that's eventually just going to be absorbed? Or are we really sort of... Uh, at the brink of something new and different and fundamentally important. It's, it's uh, dangerous to predict the future, but I think we can say now that this is probably going to be an incredibly disruptive technological advance that's going to impact New York City, potentially in very positive ways. It could cure disease, it could supercharge education, it could create all kinds of new jobs, it could make it easier to access city services. But there are real threats of spreading misinformation, amplifying bias, disrupting the job market, underwriting copyright, and potentially much worse. So we have decisions we need to make now. In New York City, yes, we need federal action, and, and it seems there's movement there, that's great news, but in New York City, in our schools, in city agencies, in the workplace, in elections, we have got to make decisions now, and that's why we've put out this call to action. In, in the report, you make a, you, you focus in particular on um, tracking and flagging and blocking false information um, that can really sort of um, spin elections in a, in, a, in, a, in, a direct, in a particular direction or misleading content that can really fool a lot of people. Uh, what's your plan on the, the path to sort of figuring out what the guidelines ought to be? Well, for elections, the danger is that these tools can very quickly and cheaply create Fabricated videos, photos, voice that is almost indistinguishable from real content. And that bad actors in elections can use this to harm rival campaigns. This has already happened uh, in the 2024 presidential race. Uh, Ron DeSantis put out something that had fabricated pictures of Trump hugging uh, Fauci. There is a lot of scrutiny at the national level. I'm more worried about local elections because we potentially get hundreds of campaigns in the next cycle without enough scrutiny. And um, I think that the Campaign Finance Board is probably the best vehicle to manage this, uh, to require that candidates that are getting matching funds clearly label content created by AI so that at least as voters, you know what's real and what's not. Uh, by a way of leading by example, I noted that the uh, executive, I noticed that the executive summary of your own report was, a, was AI generated. Yes, we did that part to prove a point, and also it saved time. It did a very good summary of the report uh, in just a few seconds. Yeah. But we also wanted people to realize that it's hard to tell sometimes whether text is written by an AI tool like ChatGPT or by a human. Um, one point that we've made in my office, and I think that every government agency needs to adhere to this principle, is that at the end of the day, a person is responsible for every word, every image, every video that goes out the door. Responsible for making sure it's free of bias, responsible for making sure it's free of misinformation. But if along the way, you can use these tools to make your job easier, right. uh, that can be a win. Well, yeah, see, that, that's why I, I'm not sure how you know, revolutionary it is on one level, right? Because right now, you can do a search and you'll get a whole bunch of different things and some of it is junk and you disregard that and some of it is stuff that you might want to follow up on and maybe you'll use it or maybe you won't. But uh, the, the, the human discernment is clearly there and when you put out something under your name, yeah. it's your, it becomes your work. Really, this is, my understanding of this is that, especially large language models, they're just kind of doing that at turbo speed. They're grabbing stuff from everywhere and they're presenting it to you as a completed paragraph. But it might be nonsense, it might not be true. It could be what they call hallucinations, where they're citing books that have never been written, uh, that sort of a thing. And so, you know, in the end, it's the user who really has to, to figure out how to use this tool. Yes, yeah, so look, we, we need to teach, particularly young people, but I think adults in general, how to consume media, how to judge the reliability of what they're consuming, because we potentially are going to get much more misinformation now that it's so easy to produce, anyone can do it. Uh, I will say that these tools are getting better and that there's early signs that they can even engage in almost human-like levels of reasoning and that that could do really powerful things. It could improve medical care in this city, for example. There, there, there are potential huge upsides. 
We just can't ignore the threats. Yeah, no, it, it reminds me in some ways of Wikipedia, right? Where, you know, yeah, it's a lot of information, but it's coming from a lot of different sources, some of which are not reliable. So you can't take it as gospel, but it can give you a pretty good guideline of some things you might want to, to look Yes, at. absolutely. I, I do want to point out, Errol, that there have been a number of experts who have called this out as a very serious threat, even ultimately to life and safety. And I think New York City can lead in response to that because we have such a large academic community here. Uh, and so I've called for the creation of a center for AI safety to look at ethics and safety around these systems. New York City could lead on this. Okay, yep, there are a bunch of people here who can do it. There are a bunch of uh, interested corporations who could even fund it. So we'll Absolutely. see how it goes.